Hello everybody, I came here about a year ago, a little less than a year ago. It's a lot windier tonight than it was when I came here last and I'm not actually here for sunset, I'm just here to take a picture. But nonetheless, uh, I think this is going to be interesting because I'm essentially taking a picture of exactly the same thing that I took with my old camera about a year ago. So this is a chance to see if I've progressed at all. Now, the composition that I've got uh, is completely different to the one that I had before. If you remember uh, the old Usk Reservoir uh, trip that I did, if not, there's, there's videos you can go and, go and see it, go and watch it. I come around here a little bit more. Uh, perhaps that might be a bit easier to, to see things. Um, the, the composition that I got was a little bit wider. I, it was, uh, the, the mountain was right in the middle. This time I wanted to really focus on, on the mountain, really get that in the frame. I'm sitting the mountain on the uh, top horizon line, uh, just so that you know where we are with the composition. Uh, uh, if I press the focus button and not the cue button, I focused it up on as, as far away in the distance as we can. I've got a two second timer and I'm just going to take that. Now I'm at one uh, twenty fifth uh, at f. I need to be at f eight, I think. Uh, let's just put that down. A couple of things I should have done. In fact, I should have done it a long time ago. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've just made sure. Let's get a bit more comfortable. I've just made sure that uh, my image stabilization is off because that's the sort of thing that can kill a shot like this. Now let's just realign this a little bit. I'm just going to reposition this a touch. What I'm really focusing on in this this image is the mountain. So I want that mountain to be in focus um, and it's right in the middle of the frame. The light's not great I have to admit. It's not really where I'd, I'd usually have this, but I'm going to take a shot like that. So I'm, this, I'm, I'm an F10, it's still, F10 still a little, a little bit dark. I'm going to put that down to F8. That's better. F8 is a lot better. So put this at F8. I'm going to do a single shot like this. Uh, we're at, like I said, we're at one, one, two, five. And then we're going to do what we did last time um, and put on the, uh, um, filters, the, the 16 stop filters, and I'm going to get a shot, similar thing, only this time we're going to do it for eight minutes. Let me just take this picture and I'll tell you why. Okay, so the, the whole reason that I wanted to do an eight minute exposure was because I checked on the Lee filters thing what exposure I should have, and that told me that eight minutes was around about right. Well, I looked, I, I did, uh, sorry, the, uh, four minutes was running about, right. Well, I did that and it didn't really work for me. It didn't seem to have the, uh, the, right, um, the right look and feel. And I've just looked at this image and you know what? I think I've got this framing all wrong. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is much like I did before. Now before I had this lovely reflection in the water. And I don't think I'm going to get that tonight because I don't think I'm in the right place to get that tonight. But I do want that mountain to sit on the horizon line. So we've got an awful lot of, uh, of water uh, in the shot. Um, and I'm going to do one exposure like this just to make sure that this is closer to what I want. Uh, and then we'll actually uh, uh, we'll set everything up and take that photo. So anyway, the, the, the Lee Filters app told me that four minutes was about right. The Photo Pills app told me that actually with 16 stops, nearly nine minutes was better. So tonight we're gonna do that nearly nine minutes and see what it looks like. Uh, and right now, uh, let's just grab that. That's a lot better. I think that's a, that's a much better image. What I'm missing on this image that I had on the other one was a lot more definition. And I think that'll change as the sun starts to set, but I'm really only doing this as an experiment. So I'm not going to be here when the sun does set. Anyway, I'll take out the uh, double 
10 and 16 stop filter combination. Sorry, 10 and 6 stop. So that's our 16 stop uh, filter here. And clean that off. And before I finish up here, uh, let me take you through uh, exactly what I've got in terms of composition. Okay, uh, so what I've done here is that the last time I came here, the camera was kind of up to eye level and I was a lot further up the beach. Um, and that meant that I was looking down on the water a bit more. But what I wanted to do is get a flat of water in this time. So if you can you see on the image that what I've got here, the, the, the water itself uh, is actually quite flat in the, in, in the frame that's coming in in there. Uh, so the water bit here, uh, it is much flatter. Uh, um, I, I think that looks a bit better. Now, this isn't tidal, so I don't have to worry about the water creeping up a lot but it is quite windy tonight. And so we do have a lot of waves coming in. And hopefully when I'm doing this for eight minutes, that's going to flatten out. It's going to look an awful lot better. Um, now, the big thing that we've, we've got to have a look at is up here uh, is where the mountain is. That's sat right on that top horizon line. And it's right in the middle. And it's framed, of course, by these lovely trees either side. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that when I get the raw file back into Lightroom, uh, this is actually going to make a big, big difference um, uh, over and above the, the, the shot that I had last time. It should do. I've got a better camera. I've got a better lens. So it should be really, really good. But I don't know. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to take off. I've got, a, I've got one of these things on. I don't like these things very much especially if you're using filters, they're really, really tricky to, do, to, uh, to get. So, right, we're, that's what we're gonna get. So hopefully we'll get this nice misty water and we'll get the mountain in the background and there will be enough light on the mountain to give it a bit of definition. Um, and uh, we're gonna slightly color this when we get it back into uh, Lightroom uh, just to see what it's like. So the framing is all set up. I'm not, I'm gonna stop this now and put it back onto photography mode. There we go. No, we don't. Uh, shutter speed needs to go back down to 1125, which is right. And I'm going to take one more shot just to make sure that I've got that right. You know what? My ISOs, my ISO can be lower than that. My ISO can be at 80. Because what's happening at the moment, uh, it's six o'clock-ish, six o'clock-ish. So the sun, even though it's not in its setting position, is starting to go down. That's making a bit of a difference. Um, do, 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 do. Right, yes, okay. Maybe I want to sort of pull this out just a little bit. Okay, happy with that. Um, I'm going to take one shot like this. Now I'm ISO 80, F8, and uh, 125 uh, uh, because we're going to put it into bold mode at that point. Uh, and then we're going to get uh, our, uh, our really, really long shot. Now, I've obviously put it onto the wrong thing there. And I've just taken five shots of the same thing, which I didn't want. OK, let's just check that out. OK, that looks good. That looks better to me. We've got a bit more definition on that hill, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, although I'm not sure colour wise whether or not we're going to get any colour from it because the, the sun is in a weird position right now. Um, however, it'll be fun finding out. Let's get our filters. Um, I'm going to struggle and put these on the front of the camera exactly the same way that I did last time. Okay, that's on there. I just have to hope for the best right now. Uh, I'm going to turn this on to bulb, which is round here. Sometimes when you're looking at the wrong angle on the camera, you can't quite see <laughs> what the camera is doing. Uh, and I'm going to do, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to put it onto bulb yet. I'm going to put it on, open up the app. Like a, a, you've got to open, I don't know why, you've got to open the app before you put it onto bulb mode. Otherwise it doesn't like using the whole 
remote detonator, remote detonator, remote trigger thing. Uh, so right back on to bulb mode. Okay, this is going to be eight minutes, um, and here we go. It's going. I think one of the things that I wanted to try with this shot, and I'm not going to talk for eight minutes, don't worry. Um, one of the things I really wanted to try with this shot is just to kind of see whether or not I've got any better over the course of a year. And not necessarily whether I've got any better, but whether the choices that I'm making over the course of that time are actually making me a better photographer or whether I'm just actually trying to complicate things. Uh, you know, I'm, I've put filters on this for the sake of having a filter on it. Although when I started out playing with ND filters and I had that little variable filter, I did that because I was playing with it. And at some point you'll get good results and at other point you won't get good results. And you just kind of have to, I mean, a lot of photography and a lot of technology when it comes to this sort of thing, you've got to just try and find your way with it. But it does sometimes make me think, is the real problem here? Not that there is um, you know, too much technology to buy, but the technology that we have, perhaps, we overuse. So I wanted to see if I was setting something up tonight and if I wanted to do something tonight and get this sort of a similar shot to what I had last time, would it actually be any better with all of the knowledge, all of the tech that I've got right now, with everything that I'm, I'm trying to do with my photography right now? Would it be a better image? And this is one of the best images that I took last year. It's, it's difficult to actually get anything I think which should be any, any good, any better than this. Is it going to be any good? Well, we'll see. I've got another uh, six minutes to go. I will see you on the other side of this. Sorry about any wind noises, by the way. And this is the raw image that appeared in the back of the camera. Now, I'd not played with ND filters with very long exposures before, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Looking back, I think I probably should have used a polarising filter on this as well, although that's not easy when you're using circular filters. I could really do with a square filter system. As for this image, well, this was my reaction. I'm not sure about that. I don't have the reflection in that like I had in the other one. I, I like the, the way that the water looks because the water is completely flat. I think part of the problem might be actually that um, I'm doing a portrait shot. And actually, I think this might work better as a landscape. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to stick this on as a landscape. So the great things about having the Arca Swiss plates is that it doesn't take very long to change things around like that. And I'm going to take off my uh, filters, pull that back, and then we'll reframe everything so that we can go again. Now, what I do like, what I do like about um, the, the, kind of the image that we've got is the symmetry of it, the way that it's surrounded by trees. And you know what? Actually, right now, I think it might be a little bit easier to, uh, to do. Sorry, just lining something up. One of the great things you've got on this camera is a, a kind of a, a horizon line, uh, which if you want, you can turn on and, and turn around and, and you get, it means you get everything absolutely straight. Now, I think that is better. And I think doing a, a, a kind of long exposure like that is gonna be better for us. Now, at the moment I've got this on bulb, I want to put this on 125th and see where we are. We're a little bit underexposed at 125th. So if I bring this up to... Where are we? I'm actually going to boost the ISO in order to do this. That's just over. But I think that gives us a slightly better... That's 160. I think that gives us a slightly better uh, look. Um, let's take a, a, an image. Just to check that that's the right sort of image that we want to take check that. See, that looks better. And there is less light at the moment as well. So the definition uh, on on the mountain is, is, is better. 
it's a mountain. I don't know if it's a mountain or a hill actually, but that definition is a, is a lot better. Um, let's just do one more, and I'm just playing around with the focusing area a little bit, uh, just because I want to make sure that bit that we get in the middle is sharp. That's better. That's more like it. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing uh, that we've just done. Cause at one twenty-fifth at f eight. Uh, that means that we can do this really long, super long exposure again. So we'll get that on here. Uh, back into bulb mode. We've got a shutter release again. Um, let's give this a go. Okay, and we're off. And I'll see you on the other side so that you can see exactly how it turned out. Here's the shot, and I think it turned out an awful lot better than the portrait image. But there was something missing for me, so I decided to correct the problem in Photoshop. Arguably, one of the things making me potentially a better photographer is my increased ability with editing tools. So a few quick selections later, and I had this image. But again, it wasn't quite what I was after, so I went back to the original portrait image, performed mostly the same actions, and ended up with this, which I posted on Twitter and polled people to tell me which was their favourite. All of the professional photographers preferred the second shot, but with some fantastic constructive con criticism, I was able to re-edit it to get this final image. I do want to say a big thank you to Richard Burnable, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name there, and Rosanna Brooks in particular, both of whom really helped me cement the changes that I needed to make to the edit in order to make the image better, all without knowing that this was a photoshopped image in the first place. Which opens up a lot of questions. Does this degrade the shot because it wasn't all done in camera? I don't think it does. After all, photography is art. Either a picture has meaning to you when you look at it or it doesn't. The method of creating that image shouldn't come into play, especially if that method is recreating what you already know is there. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. And that's it from this video, and I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's subscribed. We're over 200 subscribers now, and I'm absolutely thrilled. If you've not joined the club yet, then do click on that subscribe button, the bell icon at the end, and the little notification box comes up. And if you want to help the channel grow, then please share this video with your friends. Until next time, thanks ever so much for watching, and keep taking those photos.